Bye. 
do that song again, New Thing. And it's just been on my heart so strong again that some of you guys are doubting God or that what your situation seems like impossible. And I want us to sing this song with full confidence in Him that 2021 has new things for us, good things for us. In fact, as I watched you guys sing Kate's song, I just saw a new
Lord, it's so good when you get to hear that it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you may do tomorrow, but he's still not done with us yet. Nothing that we could ever do could ever separate us from the love of God. And forgive me because I'm the world's worst with the scripture reference. But in Psalms 116, 131, something like that, where it says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me. That surely his goodness and his mercy. I heard this week a minister say that what has so often been translated by the scholars there as mercy, that in the Hebrew it didn't mean mercy, what it meant was obligatory love. And you may hear that and you say, well, what does that mean? What that means is that even before Jesus was born, even before he gave his life on the cross, he was already referencing in Psalms, thousand years before, that his love, his covenant with you, that nothing you could ever do, nothing you could ever break, because that obligatory love of his covenant is going to follow you all the days of your life. So no matter what you've done in your past, no matter what you may do in your future, that love of his covenant that he has for you is gonna follow you every single day, everywhere you go. Thank you, Jesus. You guys can be seated. As we get to do our Compassion International offering today, Michael and Yarlin are the two guys that we get to support every month with your giving. And you guys are such a giving bunch. Y'all exceed all of the time what we need to support Michael and Yarlin and go above and beyond. So y'all just agree with me in prayer today over Michael and Yarlin. Father God, I thank you for Michael and Yarlin's precious lives. I thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against them is gonna prosper and that everywhere they go and everything that they touch, Father, is blessed. It is prosperous in their lives, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for all of those that are giving into their life today, that you return that same great blessing to them. In your name we pray, amen. You guys can go ahead. All right, how are you doing on a Wednesday? Amen. Hey, if you're joining us online, thank you so much. We hope that you feel the presence of the Lord like we do in this room. So thank you for being with us. Aren't you glad to be in church on a Wednesday? Amen, amen. Hey, I've got, I, Taylor and I are going to one day, we're going to grow up and we're going to get our own dogs. So I, have you ever had a dog? I've never, I guess I've had a long, a long time ago I had a dog. So uh, I, I don't, I don't think that I'm going to, be um, like a typical dog owner when that day comes. I'm going to be like an old lady dog owner. That dog is going to be with me everywhere I go. So take a look at this. This little boy lost his dog and, and evidently they, they found him and watched the reunion. Take a look. Come on. I got a surprise for you. Come here. Look, who's that? Who is that? Keith. Keith! 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 I miss you! <laughs> That's probably going to mean me waking up in the morning. Doggy! <laughs> I haven't seen you since. Oh, I love it. I love it. Hey, we're in the middle of a series called uh, King of My Heart. If I can get my show going, I'll, I'll, I'll help us out here. King of My Heart. And our foundation scripture is this. In, um, I'm working, but there's nothing sharpening. Here it goes. Here it goes. It's thinking. It's thinking. Here's our foundation scripture. A new heart. Maybe I'm fighting with y'all back there. Am I fighting with y'all? 
Here we go. A new heart will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Is anybody else can testify that God put a new heart inside of us when, when Jesus came in, that it's, it's, what, it's not the same. And that new heart is meant to do something. Your first fill-in is, is this, that God has created him for himself a seated place in our hearts. If you need a fill-in, if you'll raise your hand, and we'll get that one to you as quick as we can. Anybody need a fill-in or a pen? All right, so God has created for himself a seated place. How many of you at your kitchen, uh, kitchen table, you sit in the same place every time when y'all are eating dinner? You got your place, that's where you sit. And God is the same way that in our hearts, there's a place that he has made for himself to sit, that uh, it, the seat can only be occupied by him. I, I, I hope that helps people because a lot of people are searching a lot of people are wondering where God is, how he incorporated in their lives, and they search for other things that they try to fill that seed in their heart. But he has made that for himself. And the only satisfaction, no matter if you've just started serving the Lord or served him for a billion years, the only satisfaction comes when he is in that seat of authority. Jesus taught us something about what he was up to as being the king of our heart. And look, look how he taught us to pray. Jesus said, pray like this. Pray like this. Our Father dwelling in the heavenly realms, he recognizes where, his heart, where the God's heart is. May the glory of your name be the center for which, I love the passion, for which our lives turn. Our lives turn. It goes on to say, manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose, that God has a purpose, cause your every purpose to be fulfilled where? On earth, just like your purpose is fulfilled in heaven. Your next feeling, what if God is counting on us to bring what's in his heart to this world? And I believe he is, that he's counting on us through that, that lordship over our hearts to bring, like Jesus taught us to pray, what's up there, we want it down here. What's up there, we want it manifest and flowing through our, through our hearts. What if we are carriers of the purposes of God's heart? Jonathan, you don't understand. I'm just trying to pass algebra too. What if you are the carrier of the purposes of God's heart, that your heart is, li is a listening ear to the heart of God? Here's what the enemy, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit. The enemy wants to make you think you can't hear God. He wants to make you think that you are, that you are void and you're callous to the heart of God. And I'm, I'm here to let you know that if you've invited Jesus into your life and you're sincere about serving God, the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you is attentive to the heart of God. That means that, that when he's speaking, the Holy Spirit <clears throat> on the inside of you is listening. Sammy, will you run and get me a water real quick? I got a tickle all of a sudden in my throat. Don't, everybody panics when you cough these days. <laughs> it's just a tickle, nothing else. Take a look at 1 Corinthians. Those who live, this is talking about you. Those who live in the spirit are able to carefully evaluate a few things. They're able to evaluate all things and they are subject to the scrutiny of no one but God. Thanks, thank you, feller. You're the bomb.com. Can I take a little swig here? Let me see. I'll tell y'all how it tastes. Let me, let me see how this, I'll tell you how it tastes. It tastes like watermelon. My sister got some um, of those, uh, what are they called? Jelly bellies. And so we played, <laughs> we played a game the other night where Sammy would give me a, a jelly bean and I had to guess what flavor it was and all you could go by. He, he had the, the catalog, but all I could go by was the color and the taste. So they kept on giving grandma blueberry <laughs> and licorice, so she was over it. My favorite, and let me just let you in on something, my favorite is buttered popcorn. Now, if you don't like buttered popcorn, jelly bellies, or whatever those things are called, you just need to go before the Lord, repent, <laughs> and he will heal you. <laughs> but I love the buttered popcorn. Okay, 
Pray for me. For, for who has ever imitate, intimately known the mind of the Lord Yahweh well enough to become his counselor? The question is, who's going to tell God what to do? Who's going to advise God? There's no one. There's no one. Christ has, listen to this. Can I go back? Let me, can I go back? I was, just for a second, say, that's all right. We're going to rewind. Those who live in the spirit. Does anybody live in the spirit? Spirit of God living on inside of you. Are able to carefully evaluate all things and they are subject to the scrutiny of no one but God. Watch right here. But who has ever intimately known the mind of the Lord. The question is Yahweh, who's known his mind? Well enough to become his counselor. Look what the Bible says, Christ has, Jesus has, but look at the next verse, the next part of the verse. And we possessed Christ's preceptions, perceptions. We, we per possess his precepts. So the question there is, who can know God's heart? well enough to advise him and tell him what to do. And like nobody can, but Christ has. And it didn't stop right there. And we have, if the, the literal, tra the other translation says, and we have the mind of Christ. We have his perceptions. Jonathan, what does that mean? That means that God has entrusted his heart to us. Now, before we get all kooky on it, because they're going, oh, what do you, who do you think you are possessing the heart of God? I think I'm his kid. <laughs> I think I've, I hear him. Yeah, you and your parents, when you're in your house and they holler your name, you're like, who's that? <laughs> what, if, what if they say your full name? Annalise Marie Moore. What if they say the full name? Are you like, that sound, that voice sounds familiar. No, you know who it is. You know exactly, and God's, the same way with our hearts, that we know his voice, we, we hear it, and he's entrusted us with his heart, that he has found a place that is worthy of his thoughts and his, plan, his ways and his plans. This is talking about you. I know this is like, what? Yes, you have been, you have been found a place through Jesus that you are worthy of his thoughts. You're worthy to know his ways. You're worthy to understand and implement his plan. I'm going somewhere with this. You're worthy of it. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. going now we're going to Isaiah. Watch this. Watch. This is going to help you. This is going to help you. If you. Does anybody else just get, um, you just, you just are, had enough of people thinking they know everything? And they think they know better than you on most things. Um, and, then, and, then they, and they think that they uh, uh, can run things better than anybody else. And, you know, they, they, here's my favorite. They know better to do with your money than you do. Oh, gosh. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> but watch this. Watch this. Because that's a, that's a concern. Because people, some people think that they are better than even the thoughts of God. Watch this. Watch this in Isaiah. Who fully understands the spirit of Yahweh or is wise enough to counsel him? Remember, I read that a minute ago in the New Testament. Whom does he consult to be enlightened? Listen to this. This is going to help you. Who teaches God the ways of justice? Who is justice himself? Who imparts knowledge to him and shows him a true path of wisdom? Watch this. Watch this right here. Even the nations are to him like a drop in a bucket. I like this next part in the, in the Passion. Regarded as nothing more than dust on a scale. You know what a scale is? Weighing things. He says the nations, the, the, the people of this world, the ones that fight for power, the ones that think they know better than God, the, the word of God says they're like a dust on the scale a piece of dust on the scale. The ones that think that they, that they know better than God, the ways of God, the principles of the Bible, the precepts of holiness, the righteousness that comes through the word of God. God says, though they're like a piece of dust on a scale. I like to look at this next part. Look at this next part. And he picks up, God picks up the islands like grains of sand. You ready for this? You're a carrier of that same heart. You understand the ways of that same one. The same holy king of love has entrusted his ways to your heart. 
when you make him the king of your heart, that the master of the universe, the one who spoke it all into, into being, has entrusted his ways to you, that God is working a plan, his plan, right now. He's working his plan in your life. He's working his plan in this world. He's working his plan in this nation. He's working his plan in the church, that, that he's not concerned about any aspect of anything that we might face. The word of God says, who can counsel him? Who can give him advice? He who weighs the nations, the islands in his hands. That, listen, this is going to help you. His heart is in full motion. Somebody needs to hear that. that. That brings peace to me, to know that God's heart is in full motion right now. You think, Jonathan, how do you know Jesus? Jesus, He's, the way he sent Jesus into this world, the redemption that came through Jesus was evidence that his heart was in full motion and never stopping. Listen to this, that he is up to something and you're right in the middle of it. When you have made him the king of your heart, when you have committed to love him and to know him, that right in the middle of the plans of God, this, this father of all creation, the one that says, who can, who can advise him? Who can give him suggestions? Who can criticize his work? No one can. And he's at work right now. And he's in work through you. That he has planted on the inside of you his purpose. You're carriers of his purpose. You're carriers of his ways. You're carriers of his heart. He's planted that, that we've had eternity planted in our heart, that he has planted on the inside of you. Here's the cool part, your part. It's easy to look at something, someone like Billy Graham or Franklin Graham or Joel Osteen. I don't know why my mouth so dry. Was I whistling? I think I was Yelling at, at uh, Melinda back there. Was I yelling? Oh, you were yelling at me. I'm sorry. It's the other way around. <laughs> that you, it's easy to think, well, those guys, they've got a plan of God for their life. Beth Moore, she's got a plan of God for her life. Joel Osteen, they got, but God's got a plan for you. And not just some plan that we just make it and just get to the end of this life and did the best we can, but that the purposes and the righteousness and the justice of God has been planned through you. I was in my little office there and I was looking at my bookcase earlier this week and I saw this. This book right here is called Extravagant Worship by Darlene Check. And you're gonna notice that Actually, I've never read this book. That's why I think I've read parts of it. But you're going to notice that it's well-worn on the spine and the front of it's dog-eared here and here. And, and it, it actually opens up flat to her, to a picture of Darlene when she was, Darlene Check wrote, is a famous worship leader, if you're not sure, for Hillsong, if you know who they are. When she was little singing, you know why it's so well-worn? You want to know why? Because Allison, when she was a toddler, she'd carry this book around with her everywhere. You remember it, Sheila? She would carry this book. I lived with mom at the time when Allison was little, and, and uh, where mom's den is was my room, and she would go in there, and she'd find it on the shelf, and she, she couldn't read, but she would carry it around with her. You know what else? She would, it's called extravagant worship, and the, these are, these are uh, VHSs, Okay? Look at, the, look at these. Look, kids. <laughs> VHSs right here. I had to dig in my, in my garage for these. This is for this cause, and then this is a Lakewood one with Cindy Cruz. And Allison, you don't probably, may not remember this, but you would watch these. She would put these, they would put these on on the TV and the VHS where you had to fast forward and rewind. And you, you don't know this statement, but be kind, rewind. That was from these right here. Be kind, rewind. Yeah, it came from these guys. And from a little age, before she could ever read, she'd, carry, she'd go straight into my room at mom's house. She'd go and find this thing and she'd carry it around. That's why it's so dog-eared. And she'd put those VHS, I almost, said, I almost keep saying DVDs on and she'd watch them, and she'd just stand in front of her little, her, she had the chubbiest, chunkiest little legs, and she, <laughs> she just 
praise the Lord in front of them. You know what that was? We don't even know whether I do it. There's my, like, where's my iPad? That was eternity planted in her heart. The purpose and the plan of God. If you know who Allison is, she was the one that uh, was leading center stage. That God planting something inside of her. See, he's planting stuff in you too. You know what it is. You feel it. You sense it. There's things on the inside of you that only you and God know about. Dreams and plans, hopes, visions, purposes that God put on the inside of you. That he's stirring and he's making, he's making new. Look in Revelation. This is interesting. I want you to see this in Revelation. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn among the dead and the ruling king, the ruling, the ruling king who rules over what? The kings of the earth. He rules over the kings of the earth. Now to the one who consistently, constantly loves us and has loosed us from the sins by his own blood. Watch what happens. And the one who has been appointed, who has appointed us, who has appointed who? Us. Who has appointed who? You. Who has appointed who? Me. Has appointed us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and the Father to whom glory and dominion and throughout the eternity of eternities, amen, that you were designed to reign with Jesus. There's a reason he's the king of our heart. That's not just some cool little title. And Eva, I, lo- I love the graphic that Taylor did. He's not just king of our heart. He's king of our hearts for a reason, that he's ruling and reigning, that he's king forever, and that his design is, that his purpose is, that Revelation, Revelation says that he has made us kings and priests unto our God, and we will reign with him, that everything is meant to be stewarded by your heart. That our world, your world, is meant to be stewarded by your heart. Now, God, I believe God will have his ways. He will do his plan, but his best is to do it through you. His best is to work it through you. His best is to establish the kingdom through you. That your heart is directly connected to the king of all creation. Do you realize that when you have your quiet time, your little quiet time, when you have your time with the, with, the, with, the, with the Lord, that you are in direct connection with the king of overall. That you are in direct connection through your words, through your prayers, through your thoughts, through your journaling, that you're in direct connection to his heart for you, to his heart for this world, to the things that he has planned, that he's stewarding his purpose through you. Taylor, if you don't mind coming down, listen, I'm I'm gonna wrap it up with this. Are y'all ready for this? I'm gonna wrap it up with this. That we are like, in in back to the the, uh, uh, New Testament, that we are like common clay jars that carry what? Glorious treasure. That Corinthians says that you carry, though you might just be a jar of clay, that you carry a glorious treasure within so that the extraordinary overflow of power that God designed your heart to overflow with his power and his purpose will be seen as God's and not of ours. And though we experience, I like this, and though we experience every kind of pressure, we are not crushed. And at things we don't know what to do, I like this, but quitting's not an option. That we are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. That we may be knocked down, but we're not knocked out. What if the enemy is doing his best to keep God's purpose from your life? What if he's trying to do his best? And I'm not saying he's winning, but what if he is trying everything to keep you from fulfilling the purpose and the design that God has for your heart and flowing through you as the king of your heart. A few years ago, we, we, did a, we did it here a little bit, but we did a workout program called Body Attack. And we did it here some, and then we 
before that had done it uh, at a place called Gold's Gym. And so back in the day, Melinda would be there and Taylor would be there. When we first started doing that, when we were doing it at Gold's Gym, Taylor and I went to the class and then Melinda was working out into the, in the, you know, the general area. And we came out of the class, Taylor and I came out, we were done, it's an hour long class. And she looked and she goes, where have y'all been? <laughs> and we said, in the, in the body attack class, she goes, looks like y'all have just been stepped into a shower because you're just sweating just everywhere. Now, there's a few things that I like doing. Group fitness is one of them. Two reasons. One, I'm highly competitive to a fault. That's why I don't play Wahoo with my nieces and nephews. (laughs) Because I want to stay saved. (laughs) Two... I love the energy that happens in a group. And, and this, what we just read, what we just, what we, in Corinthians is, can I go back to it real quick? That I like, I like this part, that we are persecuted. No, no, let me go back one more, one more. Like, right in the middle of this, that though we experience every kind of pressure, we're not crushed. At times we don't know what to do, but quitting is not an option. And then we are persecuted by others, but God is not forsaken us. We are knocked down, but not out. And so Melinda can testify to this. And I I don't know if I did it back then, but this bald head sweat. So in the group fitness, I'll put this thing on because it catches all my sweat. So I'll put this this do-rag on. A friend of mine saw me with this the other day. He goes, what you got on? Is it? He goes, is that one of those do-rags? He goes, if you put it in your in your britches, it's a doo-doo rag. So... Uh, <laughs> And here's what happens at the end of that hour, you're sweating, you're tired, you're done, but it's almost over. And did I not do this almost every time, Mo, that we get to that last track and I'd take my sweat rag and I'd start swinging it like this. I still, I I do another fitness class right now that, uh, and I do that At at the very end, I'm swinging it like this. And what's the reason? Because there's power in it. There's, there's power in winning. That though you might feel like you're out of energy, that you're almost at the end of what you can take, that God says you got more inside of you, that you may be knocked down, and God says you're not knocked out. He, he, he said you might be overwhelmed. He said, but I'm more than enough inside of you. He's saying that I don't know what's gonna happen. He goes, I'm the alpha and I'm the omega and I'm everything in between. He says, I don't know how it's gonna turn out. He says, I do. All things are gonna work together for your good and they're gonna fit into my plan for you. They're gonna fit into my plan for this world. They're going to fit into my plan for this. All I'm asking you to do is let me be enthroned upon the heart, your heart. And that kind of stuff cranks me up. And so in your prayer time, you should see yourself, get you a do-rag, get you a do-do rag and just start swinging that thing when you know God's purposes are going to happen in this world. They're going to happen in my world. They're going to happen through my prayer that God's going to establish his kingdom through my, through my talk. He's going to establish it through my words. He's going to establish it through his heart that I've been sent to love people. And then like we said last week, in the middle of loving people, that the heart of God and the passion of God and the anointing of God that removes the burden and destroys the yoke is going to fall on them. That what if the enemy, we already filled that one in, your next one. What if God is working his best plan in you right now? If he's working his best plan in me right now, let's get this going. See, the enemy doesn't want, he he wants you to throw in the towel. He wants you to give up. He wants you to think it's too, it's too far gone. It's too hard. But what if he right now is working his best plan in me? Your last feeling. What if the very purpose of God is going forth right now in the heart of believers. That what would happen? What would happen, church? What would happen if we aligned ourselves with his heart? That we found ourselves not just people that are getting by, people that are just hoping and a praying, holding on to the end, 
But we started seeing ourselves that the mighty king of glory is working through our lives, that he is working through our hearts, that he is doing his plan in the earth and he's doing it through us. Those are the days we're living in. Those are the times we're living in that God is doing something right now and we can choose if we want to be right in the middle of it. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you that your heart is being established in us. Whether we've served you for a week or served you for 10 years, it doesn't matter that your heart is being established on the inside of us. And so Lord, make our hearts tender, attentive to what you have. I'm asking you, God, that we find those opportunities in this world to be a blessing, that we look for those opportunities to reach people, bless them, love them. Show your grace, show your mercy. Maybe you're in this room with no one looking around just for a moment, or maybe you're watching right now and you've never invited Jesus into your heart. I wanna give you that opportunity. No one's looking around. If you would like me to lead you in a prayer right where you sit, just simply just raise your hand up and then you can put it right back down. If you're in, watching, just simply right there, nobody would know what you're doing, just raise your hand and put it right back down. Just a response. And let's pray this prayer together. Dear Lord Jesus, that's right, say it out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of my sin. And I make a commitment to follow you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, something changed in your heart. That's God. That's how much you mean to him. That's how precious you are to him. Follow him. Find a church. This church, if you're in our area, but if you're not in our area, find a church that loves God, believes the word of God, and serve him. Follow after him. Amen.